Hey, Jake Williams for Rendition InfoSec here. Wanted to chat a little bit about Article 11 and Article 13 from the proposed European Union Copyright Directive. You may remember that Article 11 was going to largely create a link tax of sorts, uh, and Article 13 was going to create uh, what equivalently was a DMCA on steroids, right? So, Digital Millennium Copyright Act, everything wrong with that, uh, at least from a consumer standpoint. Now, from a publisher standpoint, this was a Wow, they couldn't have been any happier. Uh, but uh, from a, uh, and definitely from a consumer standpoint, uh, definitely this was going to create some, uh, create a lot of issues. Uh, you could think of it as a lot of people briefed it as uh, the death of memes. Uh, there were lots of other issues with this. I mean, obviously we need to protect our internet memes. Nothing's more important than that. No, but listen, very, very, very seriously, I outlined, uh, and again, I'll link the video here in the uh, comments, uh, but I outlined some of the reasons why Article 11 and Article 13 were a bad idea yesterday uh, ahead, of this, uh, ahead of this vote, as well as uh, what some of the InfoSec, uh, you know, InfoSec implications were going to be for these. Um, I want to highlight here that, uh, you know, the vote uh, today was unsuccessful, um, and the, uh, you know, the directive is, is, now, uh, is now going back to the, uh, going back to the drawing board. Um, the president of the European Union was very vocal uh, on Twitter um, that uh, no one else would decide how the European Union, uh, you know, influences or will influence them and help them decide how they're going to handle copyright, uh, even though there were a lot of big parties involved in the lobby. Uh, and that's kind of what he was, uh, you know, inside and outside of the European Union. And that's what he was really referencing there. Um, that said, uh, the vote was a little too close for my uh, for my taste. Uh, three seventy eight, or sorry, uh, three eighteen to two seventy eight um, was the uh, was the total. Uh, so three hundred eighteen uh, votes against two seventy eight four. Uh, if you're good at math, you know it's forty vote swing. Um, there were thirty one abstentions, according to uh, to Wired uh, Wired UK. Uh, UK desk, uh, so 31 abstentions and a 40 vote swing between. Um, look, uh, this doesn't make me comfortable, right? So this means that 278 people um, thought that this was a good idea, and there literally needed to be a total of nine swing votes, right? If you count the 31 that abstain, nine swing votes uh, to uh, basically to bring this thing back to life. That that really doesn't leave a whole lot of wiggle room. Uh, also, we don't know why the 318 voted the way they did. So, um, you know, there may be some very, very minor changes that could happen to uh, to this legislation that could bring it back to life. I, I, I suspect this is going to be a lot like zombies, kill it with fire, shoot it in the head, uh, or it's it's just not going anywhere, right? So seriously, um, look, uh, while I want to celebrate a victory today, and I absolutely am going to, uh, <clears throat> while we want to celebrate the victory today, we also want to recognize that, uh, you know, again, this is definitely not over by a long shot. Uh, we expect this to rear its ugly head again uh, with honestly, very minimal revisions. Again, you know, if you put this down where we're talking 500 to uh, 50 votes, uh, you know, 500 votes to 50, um, you know, again, that, that's a whole separate scenario than what we saw here, which is 318 to 278, 31 abstentions. It, again, doesn't make me feel good. And, and listen, I'll be the first to tell you, I don't understand uh, all of European Union politics. It's my understanding there are 751 seats inside of the European Parliament. Uh, I'm doing the math here, uh, 278 uh, plus 318 plus 31 is 627. Um, so there's uh, what I like to call uh, a lot of votes missing, uh, meaning I'm not entirely certain where those other votes are at. Uh, you know, again, uh, maybe some parliament members didn't show up and those don't show up as abstentions. I, look, bottom line, man, I, I, I don't know. Um, but I'll tell you again, if there really are 751 votes, like I thought there were in European Parliament, uh, this is going to be really, really interesting because uh, there, the margin of uh, 318 uh, to 278, um, you know, again, we're looking at almost 600 there. That would leave 150 votes uh, outstanding with only a 40 vote swing, right? So again, I, I want to throw out here that while we're out of the woods immediately, right? So we're out of the immediate danger zone. Um, understand, of course, this is very, very likely to rear its ugly head again. Um, I highly recommend that you educate yourself, whether you work in the European Union or not, that you educate yourself on these issues, right? Uh, and bring these up to management. This is one of these things that I know we're all strapped for time inside InfoSec. Uh, none of us have lots of extra time in the day to go be chasing other problems that you know may or may not happen. But but listen, my friends, uh, th this is a problem that is uh, that is likely to uh, to come down the road. That's the kind of thing that we want to be thinking about today. Uh, if I'm making new system architecture decisions, uh, I want to take a look at uh, uh, you know, system architecture decisions, particularly if I'm in the social media space uh, or just in the media space in general. Uh, I want to be looking at these to try to determine, uh, you know, again, how would design decisions I make today, even without Article 11 and 13 as written, um, you know, how would I... Uh, 
how would I change those if Article 11 and 13 were a reality, right? Because my friends, as much as I don't want them to be, um, I fully expect some iteration or some form of, some mutation of Article 11 and Article 13 to, uh, to eventually pass, right? So, so again, for today, I'm super happy, couldn't be more stoked, uh, but uh, again, and by the way, uh, EFF has done a phenomenal job. Uh, EFF has done a phenomenal job of, uh, you know, of, uh, basically lobbying uh, here for these, uh, basically to uh, prevent these from taking effect. Uh, again, uh, if you haven't donated to EFF recently, uh, if you're going to be out at a hacker summer camp, uh, one, uh, hook, you know, uh, shoot me, uh, drop me a line. Uh, let's get together for a beer. Uh, but secondarily, uh, you know, when you see EFF out there, uh, drop some money in the bucket there too. Uh, if you can only do one, uh, don't buy me a beer. Give EFF some money uh, because uh, they uh, they definitely uh, definitely need it. So uh, they're doing a lot of good work here, and uh, it's largely due to their efforts uh, that uh, this is uh, uh, this has been struck down. And so anyway, I just wanted to celebrate a little bit uh, and kind of follow up to the video that I posted before. Now again. Uh, even though we now know uh, that that uh, you know again that these are uh, not going to pass as written, I still recommend that you understand the issues surrounding this. And again, check out the other video that's uh, that's linked in the uh, uh, linked in the comments here. Uh, understand uh, you know the implications around Article 11 or Article 13, uh, because again, it is highly likely that these will be revived in some form, and we'll have to deal with these sooner than later. Anyway, Jake Williams from Edition InfoSec signing off.